Let's say we have a game with a bunch of interactable objects. I've got these cubes which need to do things, I've got this door which needs to do something, I've got this button over here which needs to do a thing, and then I've got this sad excuse for a chest which needs to do a thing. All interactable by the player, and usually you would probably uh, go into your player class, and I have a little setup here for doing a line trace when I press the left mouse button. And you would probably get the break results out of that usually, and then you would start uh, casting all over the place, like casting to our uh, door sliding, and if that cast fails, you would cast to uh, the button that I've just made. I don't know which one it is, but it doesn't matter. And anytime you make a new interactable object, you're going to need to add a new cast here. Well, that is not great from a workflow perspective, because if you've got like 100, 200, 1000 items that you need to be able to interact with, you're gonna need to cast a thousand times. And that also comes with a performance hit, because anytime you add a casting node into your blueprint, that creates a hard reference to that other class. So now, anytime our BP first person character is loaded, it automatically also loads in sliding doors into memory. And if you've got a thousand items that you're casting to, you're now loading in a thousand classes, most of which aren't even in whatever level you're in at that time. Very, very bad for your memory performance. So we don't want to do that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to be using a blueprint interface. An interface is just a way that one blueprint can say, hey, other blueprints, if you have anything to do with this interface, I don't know that you do or you don't, do your thing. That way, things aren't as tightly linked together, and they can be a lot more modular and a lot more scalable in a bigger scenario. So, how do we do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. You come up here into your blueprints, and there we can make a blueprint interface. I'll call this BPI for blueprint interface, uh, and let's call it player interact. If we open that up, we come into this graph, which you can see is read only. You can't make a function here. And that is very important because you're not going to be making any functions in here. Well, you're going to be making the functions. You're not going to be programming them in. All this is, is a list of functions that belong on this interface. So when we add this interface into one of our blueprints, it's going to have access to all of the functions that we make here on the right hand side. The actual code that is inside of those functions is going to be put in those blueprints themselves. So I'll show you. Uh, we'll say this is player interacted and we can add another function if we wanted to. So from there this works like a normal function. We can make inputs and outputs. It should be noted that if you don't create an output here, so you don't have a return node, your interface functions will show up as events in the blueprints that you put them on. If you do have an output with a return node here, it shows up as a function because events can't have a return nodes, they don't have an output. So if you want an output, it's gonna turn into a function. We don't need an output right now, so I'm going to just get rid of that. And I think when we compile it, it might not get rid of the return node. I don't know, we're gonna figure out whether or not this is going to be a function or an event because of that. Uh, I've never really added an output and then removed it, so I don't know what it's gonna do here. Uh, but let's add an input for the uh, player that interacted with it, and that's just going to be uh, an actor. Well, actually, let's just make it a first-person character object reference, because this is always going to be done by the player, because that's what we're making this interface for. While this prevents casting and just makes things a little bit easier on you as you're making your script. And now let's go into our blueprints here. I've got some blueprints up here, an exploding cube, the sliding doors, uh, the button, and the chest. So we want to add this interface to these blueprints. And the way we do that is we can go up here into class settings. And here we have a list of interfaces. So we can say in our implemented interfaces, we can just simply just add one. And there's a whole bunch of ones that Unreal just provides you with, which can be very, very useful. 
uh, but we of course made our BPI player interact. Then on the left hand side here we'll immediately see we have a new section called interfaces and if we right click this we can implement this as an event and now we can hook this up to the code that I pre-made that will spawn emitter at location. And we've got this parameter here for the player. So let's say that the player uh, has a coin variable. So let's get that coin variable and like just increment it whenever we explode one of these things. So we can put that after spawning the particles before destroying the actor. And we'll do the same thing here in the sliding doors. We'll go into the class settings, into implementable interfaces, and then BPI player interact. We suddenly have player interacted. We can implement that event and then we can uh, play this timeline which will open up the door. Now for the button the same thing and I think you get the point. We're just going to implement this in all these three things and now all these objects can do what they need to do without the player needing to even know what they are. And for this chest I'm going to uh, do a little bit more here um, because for this chest what we're going to do is we will simply get our coin total and set our new coin total to be the coins that are in this chest plus the coins that the player already had. Importantly, the player doesn't need to be able to read the amount of coins in this chest because the chest will just be able to get the information from the player, calculate what the new player total should be, and then set that. Okay, so we've got these events implemented in all these different blueprints, but now how do we access that from the first person character? Because it's quite nice that we have these events here, but in order to access those events, we're still going to need to cast, right? Because we, we can't just access an event on a blueprint without casting. That's why interfaces are great, because no, actually, we can. If we use this hit actor output, which you would usually use for casting, what we can actually do is player interacted, we can send a message to that actor. And you see it has an input for the player. And what this will do is it will try to run the corresponding function on an interface if the blueprint that we're interacting with has it. If it doesn't, this just doesn't do anything. It doesn't crash, it doesn't cause problems. But if the thing that we're interacting with does have the interface and does have an implementation for that function on that interface, it will just run its own code there. So let's connect this up, uh, get a simple reference to self for this parameter here. And now if we go through, we should be able to see I have got zero coins. If I walk up to this, I explode that cube and I have a line trace for the, uh, for the interacting and my coins increased just as I predicted. And then I can open up this door, I can go to this button and turn on the light, and I can go up to this chest and get the coins out of that chest. Now, this chest will always give five coins because there's nothing actually like interestingly programmed in there to do whatever, but you get a point, right? We can make an endless amount of objects without needing to go back into our player character here and add a bunch of casting which makes both for a messy workflow and also bad performance. Like we could very easily just make a copy of this chest now and this will be a storage chest instead. So let's call this store chest. It just will work now. So let's collect these coins. Let's open this door. Um, just why not turn on the light again, collect some of the coins out of this. And now we can go in here and store our coins in there. Let's go take some more coins out of this chest and then we can put them in there and this just works. All without needing to do a single cast. And one last thing to really show off is if we make a second function here and I don't need any inputs for this but I do have a output for the coins which is an integer. Going into my chest blueprint here we have this new function. I've called it inspect object, and this simply just returns the coin variable on this chest. This way we can use interfaces to make things like variable getters, which is just a function that gives you the value of a variable, without casting either. So if we have a bunch of different kinds of chests which all 
need to be able to tell the player what the amount of coins in it is or maybe we don't want this only on chests but maybe we also want this on enemy characters when we right click on them we want to see how much money they have in their pocket or something like that we can make whatever function we want on whatever object we want and it will just return a integer for the coins and then in the player character we can also use the inspect object and this will now have a output so again without needing to cast to the chest we can now access a variable on that chest through our interface output so what i did before using the player here to get the coins and then set the coins on the player again is a pretty good way to do specifically this because we could also be interacting with a bunch of other objects which don't have anything to do with coins but as you can imagine it's also pretty simple at this point to say when we inspect the object uh to set our coin total to be equal to like the thing that we're inspecting plus our current coin total and well that's the wrong note but you get the point right so you can also get variable information and make that as complex as you would like through using interfaces and as always if you want to mess around in this project with these simple example objects and play around a little bit more with how this actually works with the interfaces there's a link down below in the description to both a members only post here on youtube and a patreon post where you can download the project files uh, i've been using in this example and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons sergey thomas